Greetings and salutations, this is Imperator Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. This is our Persian Chariot. You may have viewed our unboxing video for the Persian Chariot. It's done. Um, and I've done quite a few modifications to the crew. Um, the crew that you get in the chariot, I have used elsewhere. So I've kept the driver and I've kept the guy pointing, sort of looking. Um, but I've replaced the two the rear guys because this is actually a king's chariot it's supposed to be your commanding general and I wanted to do, I wanted to use it as a normal chariot so this is supposed to be I don't know Darius or Xerxes or someone like that or a famous general and so instead I've modified the chariot the chariot crew and I've give, put a bowman in the back seat and a javelin man in the back seat as well so I've swapped the original crew for for this crew. Um, the figures, these are the figures that come with it. These are the figures that I've added. These figures are from um, Wargames Foundry. Props. Yeah, they're from, from Wargames Foundry. And they actually go together quite well. Um, the Foundry figures are slightly shorter. Only slightly. Um, but they're... A little bit thicker, a little bit wider. But that is just turned out okay. That's a casualty on the floor there, and twisting it round, you there's a hoplite that's come to a sticky end down there. He's still trying to hold his um, dory up though, so he's, he's putting in it, putting the effort in. So that's our Persian chariot. Um, stats: um, they carry javelins. Um, they also carry a bow. Not sure in real life, I suppose a bow will be useful, but in gaming terms, a bow on the back of the chariot is useless. Because it's moving. Yeah. And... But in reality, actually, it's not a bad idea. Um, bowmen on the back of chariots, it means you can move your bowmen forwards very quickly and then retreat very quickly. Um, um, it has impact um, and it can evade. And it's big and takes a lot to kill, um, unless you kill horses. You don't tend to kill horses, generally. Why not? It's easier. Well, it would be much better if you can have them. See, whenever you get a horse-based empire, come up against an empire that is not horse-based, the horse-based empire loses, generally. Because the people who aren't horse-based don't care about horses and just kill the horses. Think of the Normans invading England. Mm -hmm. and the only reason they won was because they killed Harold. Um, but we'd killed all their cavalry. Because whenever a cavalryman came close to us, we hit the horse in the head with a heavy thing. And the horse died. And this really, really upset the enemy battle plan because you're not supposed to kill horses. It carries the death penalty killing horses, but of course the house cows didn't care. We called horses food. And then after the horse went on vacation. Yeah, and yeah, and then they all, they all went away. Um, so, this is the chariot itself. Um, questions? Any questions? One of the Persians wants famous for putting spikes on the end of their wheels. Yes. Um, this is later though. You don't put it on your wheels. But, they, did, they do. No, you don't. They did though. No, they didn't. You don't put spikes on your wheels. Well, in that film. In a film, yeah. Well, okay, uh, let's think of the logistics. Um, you put spikes on your wheels. Well, yeah, what happens it's... when you hit something that doesn't move? Well, is you're going to hit it, it's just going to snap off. Yeah, you, well, if you're lucky, your blade snaps off. Oh, if you you're unlucky, home. your entire axis snaps. And your men in your chariot learn how to fly very quickly. And if they don't have wings, they, they hit the ground and it hurts. And your chariot falls over, the horses probably die. And you all get killed. Um, so, no, the spikes come out here. This side, that's where you have the spikes in your chariot. And you have another set down here in front of your wheels. Coming out there. Um, as to whether or not they really used them a lot, they probably didn't. Um, spikes came out around after the, per the Greek or Persian War. Um, there were some spikes... Uh, some were first used in Lydia. Um, during uh, before the Greek or Persian War started, there was a, 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 an attempt to use them against the Greek phalanx, 
Um, they only worked when the Greeks weren't in fags. And there was a battle where two chariots had scythes on them. Uh, and they managed to ride through a Greek camp. And the Greeks weren't deployed for fighting. And they killed a lot of Greeks by riding through the camp and hacking them to pieces as they rode past. Um, but they didn't use them in the Greek or Persian War in Greece particularly because there's no mention of them. There's no evidence they were there. Certainly the Greeks had large amounts of cavalry and the Greeks didn't differentiate linguistically between chariots and men on horses. So it's quite likely the Persians had chariots. But there's not a lot of places in Greece where you can use chariots. Because it's all hilly. Uh, to use chariots you need flat open plains. And the Persians were never really in a position to deploy them. Um, possibly at Plataea they would have used chariots. And then they all died. So, that didn't work out. Yeah. Um, but certainly by the time of Alexander, which is a couple of hundred years later, um, Alexander did come up, come up against scythe chariots, and they were completely and utterly useless. They were pointless machines. Although the Romans, uh, apparently the British had scythe chariots. When the Romans invaded Britain, um, there's descriptions of British scythe chariots which had the scythe at the front sticking out here. Which is kind of a cleverer place to put it. Apparently there was either some wheels at the front with it on or it was just in front of the horse. Although, again, I will have to add, there is no archaeological evidence to back this up. They've never found a scythe in Britain that could have gone on a scythe chariot. And they never found any form of harness or anything that could have gone on. Um, the, the Romans did draw them, but how do you know they're telling the truth? Propaganda. Yeah, it could have been, oh, these Celts are actually a complete and utter walkover, uh, therefore we don't look very impressive, so what we need to do is tell everyone that the... the, the they were a fierce force. Um, yeah, they're they massive scythe chariots. Yeah, they have technology that like yeah. we've never seen before. Whereas in reality, the Romans made short work of the um, Celtic chariots. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, chariots are useless against Romans. In fact, they're useless against any form of infantry. Um, they're just useful for carrying around men who throw weapons. That's really what they for. Right, um, any questions? Last question. Go on. Uh, were the uh, Persians also famous for, ha for having like the world's biggest chariot army? Um, yes, at the time. Obviously, if you go further back in history, the Babylonians had large chariot forces. And at this time, the Babylonians still, still had large numbers of chariots. Um, but if you go further back into history, into, into sort of pre-Greek history, um, certainly the Hittites and, and the Greeks themselves used chariots quite a lot. Um, but really, the Egyptians were the mint chariot army. They had massive amounts of chariots. Huge amounts. Like they, they had no amount of horsemen. They only had chariots. And it wasn't really until you get into this period that we're playing now where mounted horsemen became a thing. And even now, even during this period, most horsemen would dismount to fight. Like the immortals. The immortals would ride into battle, but they would dismount to fight. Um, if they, they might throw a javelin from the back of the horse and ride away, but no one fought on horseback during this period. It's stupid. It will get you killed. In fact, throughout history, riding on a horse and trying to fight has, has, has always been a bad idea. The Crusaders are the ones who made it a safe. Yes, we created the saddle, um, the, 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 the high back saddle, and en enabling you to fight from the back of the saddle. So you don't fly off when you hit someone. Yeah. Uh, the Romans, I've mentioned this in the, I've, I've said this before, I've, we've done another video I mentioned this. Uh, the Romans had a type of saddle where they could hang, hold on to the saddle while they fought, but they didn't actually fight as in, in combat. It was more for chasing people. And we also mentioned how the two times invented their own version, which where they had a back, a bigger back to it. So yeah, because they used someone. The yeah, they used the, back. Yeah, the long lance. Yeah, which is a two-ton, massive, eighteen-foot lance. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's the end of the video, is it? I think so. Yeah. Right. So. 
this is the first chariot we've got. Um, I, as I said, had to modify the crew because I'm not using it as a king's chariot, um, but I have been able to use the crew on on the king. So uh, I'll show you that video later. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of um, the Persian chariot. Um, that's everything from me. And everything from him. Goodbye. See ya.